Welcome, folks, to a time-traveling erotic adventure of <laughs> equipped from the 80s. Oh, God, I'm back. Uh, and I'm back with another quickie, another little episode about the uh, nuggets of pop culture from the 80s that I love and still love and, and hold dear. Uh, this is another television episode, and I'm going to talk about a show that not too many people know of and um i've if you're a fan of me if you're a fan of the channel and you've been here for a while you know i've talked about this show <clears throat> before um it was short-lived it was one season it was from 1985 and it's called misfits of science ah! yes that's right misfits of science uh, it was a hour-long action adventure. Oh my god! They know! I don't- they found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Run for it, Marty! So, uh, it was an hour television show, uh, action adventure in the 80s, in 1985. Uh, it was about 13, 14 episodes, um... And sadly, the only reason it was canceled was because the the, the star of the show was killed uh, in a uh, airplane accident uh, crash, and so kaput, there it went. But um, it was a superhero show um, in a way, not not your you know men in tights. You know, going to save the world and whatnot. It was much like a uh, uh, an X Men type show. These were people who these extraordinary things happened to, um, and there was a group, the main um, uh, character, and who, by the way, didn't have any powers. It was the assemblage of the misfits of science that had uh, the powers. He was just kind of, I guess part of the brain of the operation um but it also had um maxwell wright who was the dad in elf and he was part of the organization um kevin peter hall was a part of the organization but he had powers kevin peter hall uh was harry from harry and the hendersons he was the predator in the first two predator films a very large man um but he uh, he could turn himself tiny uh, in the show. It also had um, this guy named Johnny B, who is an actor from Ski School, uh, who was the asshole in Ski School. But Johnny B uh, could shoot electricity from his hands, um, and he was like the he was the cool. He wore a leather jacket and always wore sunglasses. You know, he had the 80s mullet and everything. He said cool shit. Um, but he would he would clasp his hands together and shoot electricity from his hands. And then there was Lil Courtney Cox. Lil Lil Courtney Cox. This was Courtney Cox. This was Courtney Cox in the uh, um, dancing in the dark style Courtney Cox. Bruce Springsteen Courtney Cox. Um, and she could move things with her mind. Um, her power was kind of like, it was a little bit of moving things with her mind, and she could also uh, tell what people were thinking, and, you know, it was, it was like that. It was kind of a mix of, of, uh, of um, Professor X and, and Jean Grey and everything. But, um, so they would these things would happen, these, these adventures would happen, these mysteries. It was kind of like a, you know, the mysteries would be almost like action style of like uh, uh, MacGyver or Magnum P.I. Or, or those types of shows. Always, you know, villains and whatnot doing nefarious things. Um, and the misfits would take care of it. And... I adored this show. I really adored this show. Um, so much so that I'm going to tell this story, and some of you may have heard it, but you f new folks have not. But So, 
85, I was in love with this show. I was nine years old. I would go over to my cousin Jesse's house. Her and, um, you know, my Uncle John, my Aunt Suzanne, some of the Seaver weirdos. And every, um, I would kind of alternate going from my Grandma Bowker's house on weekends to uh, Uncle John and Aunt Suzanne's to see Jesse for the weekends. And so this was a Friday night because it would aired Friday nights. And <laughs> um, I was all jazzed to watch Misfits of Science. I remember just being like, you know, we can do whatever. You know, we can play whatever. We can do whatever. But tonight we're watching Misfits of Science, you know, little nine-year-old Chris telling everybody how the score was going to go. Um, so I remember my Uncle John, who is a Seaver, so he's a fucking goofball and a prankster and a, and a weirdo. So he goes, all right, all right, Chris. He goes, you finish your dinner, but if there's one crumb... If I see one crumb, you're not watching Misfits of Science. So I was like, okay, no problem, you know? <laughs> so me and Jess were eating dinner and everything, and I'm really jazzed about, I can't wait, I can't wait for Misfits of Science. And, you know, we clear the plate, everything is good, even even take it to the, the dish, you know, the sink, I'm like, I'm doing everything right, making sure there's nothing. And so, you know, Jesse and I go and we play probably Dark Crystal or Ghostbusters or whatever, because we did a lot of weird shit. We acted out a lot of weird stuff. Um, and then I hear Michael John <laughs> from the kitchen and he goes, Chris, <laughs> get in him, you know. So we go in there, and he's like, what's this? And I'm like, what? And he goes, aha, a crumb. <laughs> and he's like pointing to the ground, you know. And I'm like, what? And he goes, ah. I said you had to eat every crumb, and there's a crumb on the floor. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, ah. He goes, he's like, you're not watching Business of Science? And I start bawling. I remember just being like defeated, like, ah! you know, like, I did everything! You monster! <laughs> my cousin Jess is laughing and everything. And, and, you know, my Aunt Suzanne comes in the room and she starts laughing and everyone's laughing. And they're like, we're not, you're going to watch Mr. Science. Don't be stupid, you know? Like, they were just, he was just being a seaver, just being a turd ball. And I was like, Bleh! and then I started laughing. And I was laughing at myself because I was crying. And the show just meant that much to me. I just had never seen anything like that at that time. You know, television show with sweet powers and dope songs. And, you know, the first episode, they had used the Thomas Dolby Blinded me with science, you know that it was just it was a, such a cool show, and I just loved it. And it's always been one of my favorites. And throughout the years, I had bootlegs of the show because it was it's never been available on uh, US DVD. So I've always had bootlegs of the show either on VHS in the early days, or you know when going to DVD and I would be at a convention or something and just buy like shitty bootleg of it. But then. A few years ago, uh, I can't remember how many years when they first put this out, but um, thanks to, I, I got a, uh, and I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier on, but I started getting uh, foreign DVDs in 2002, and that's the first time I got a um, region-free DVD player. Uh, and I just started getting as many foreign releases as I could because they just weren't available in the U.S. And I was like, uh, you know, Crom, sing the praises of the region-free player. Um, so a few years ago, uh, I realized that, wait a second, let me just, let me just see. So I typed in, uh, Misfits of Science DVD set. 
And lo and behold, a German, official German DVD set existed. Uh, straight up. Real. Authentic. Uh, you know. Professional. From a real company. <laughs> you know. Put this set out. And I was like, oh. And it has, you know, it, it was it's in English as well. Uh, and I was like, this is amazing. So I ended up putting it on my varied myriad of wish lists on Amazon um, and then I can't remember who it was but I it was it ended up being a, a gift to me for either Christmas or a birthday a couple years ago and now I own Misfits of Science on DVD oh it's all there folks it's all there oh. um and maybe, you know, while we've been talking, Zach has uh, put up a little screen of images from the show or the opening while I'm sitting here and you're enjoying it. But um, if you love 80s music, if you love 80s action, if you love 80s television, um, superheroes, uh, mutant powers, uh, cheesiness, elf, <laughs> Courtney Cox then I say you need to check out Misfits of Science. It's a great show, sadly short-lived, um, but it's uh, a show that I have never forgotten, and I have that really very funny memory connected to it, and I'm so glad to have it. And this was another one of those, like, as soon as I got it, I just watched, I did it a full day, and just watched the whole disc. The whole discs, all of the discs, the whole set. And brought back so many awesome memories. And uh, so that is another 80s recommendation from a from the 80s. Misfits of Science, 1985. Check it out, folks. Get rad, won't you? <laughs>